Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Sam Kwok here with the Kwok Brothers. And last week I made a video covering a new stimulus bill that would essentially cancel all rent and mortgage payment up to one year. While this bill isn't picking up any steam, nor are we seeing much progress, and there isn't a nationwide cancellation on rent, but it is becoming apparent that a lot of rent strike movement is taking place in states like New York, Illinois, California, and even Texas. In this video, I'm gonna go break down exactly why the rent strike may actually backfire against the tenants, it actually works against them, and if you're a landlord watching this, you may wanna show this to your tenants that may have joined the rent strike movement. Now, I did make a video similar to this one a couple days ago, but I wanna double down on what could possibly happen if the rent strike movement would continue to happen around the country. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Sam Kwok here, one of the Kwok Brothers. And I'll say this up front for you guys, that I am a landlord, but I'm also a tenant. Not only do I have a landlord for my own home, but I also have a landlord for this very office that I'm filming this video out of. Typically, most of our videos are for landlords and people that want to become a landlord, but I wanna address this video specifically for you guys watching that are tenants. And please hear me out, I am not anti-tenant. I actually wanna see both sides, landlord and tenants, come out of this ahead and both have win-win scenario and situations after this coronavirus pandemic. Because at the end of the day, I truly care about people in general, not just landlords, not just tenants. I care about all people and I try to create a win-win scenario for everybody. I know many of you tenants watching this and even landlords watching this, you might be frustrated, angry, or afraid that an eviction might happen to you and you are wondering what's gonna happen. And a lot of you guys might be participating or you're joining a rent strike movement, but I'm here to tell you guys that that's gonna backfire and I'll show you why and explain exactly why it could potentially have a negative impact on tenants for a very long time. So let's go and look at some facts. There are approximately 48.5 million rental properties here in the United States and about 47% of them are owned by individual landlords. They're often the small timer landlords, you know, the mom and pop individuals, they may live down the street from you. And a lot of them may just have one rental property and that's pretty much it. They probably don't live in a mansion or drive around in a fancy car. They don't have a luxurious lifestyle. They're just like you and me, right? Ordinary people, they have family, they have friends. In fact, some of your family members or your friends might be this type of a landlord. That being said, a lot of these small time landlords are less prepared for pandemics like these. And a lot of times they run a very very thin margin, which means that they're barely profitable and they're barely surviving through their landlording business. Like I mentioned in my last video, typically 50% of the rent that you pay to the landlord goes towards expenses. And what I'm referring to are property taxes, insurance, maintenance, repairs, future improvements. And more often than not, the other 30 to 40% goes towards paying the mortgage or any other debt that they may have on the rental property. So that ultimately means that only 10 to 20% of your actual rent is the actual profit for the landlord. So as you can imagine, 47% of all landlords are not swimming in a pile of cash. The rent money is simply supplementing their existing income and that's pretty much it. So that leaves us with the other 53% of the landlords that are most likely corporate owners. They're owned by a REIT, which is Real Estate Investment Trust, often publicly traded in Wall Street and stock markets, and they might be backed by a hedge fund. Now, even with these hedge funds and also REITs, they're also being invested by individuals that have 401ks, IRAs, so, so even the ordinary people that have jobs or they might be investing in a 401k on their side, they're invested in a lot of these corporate landlords that pretty much make up the other 53% of all landlord pool. The rent strike movement has already hurt a small population of the landlord, but if this movement gets bigger and bigger and more tenants don't end up paying rent, here's what ultimately happens. Because a lot of these small time landlords that are vulnerable and they're not able to collect rent, they might just end up getting foreclosed on or they have to file bankruptcy or in the last course of action, they might end up selling their homes and rental properties to the other 53% of the corporate landlords that are wealthier and bigger and they have more resources. So as a small time landlord myself, my option will be then to either foreclose or to sell my properties to some of these larger corporate owners, which then they'll take over and they're more likely to exercise their power by evicting you if you choose not to pay. These large corporate landlords and real estate investment trusts, hedge funds, they have the time and the money to wait it out. Not only that, they also have a professional team of legal experts as well as managers. They'll most likely evict you one way or the other. And also it's gonna be far less likely that you're gonna be able to negotiate anything with these corporate owners and large Wall Street type landlords, mainly because they have thousands of thousands of different apartment units and houses 
And they'll look at you and say, well, she or he is just a number. We're just going to evict them because we don't really care. We don't know who they are. A lot of these big corporate landlords may not care that they're going to lose a couple thousands of dollars until they can evict you until they find someone who can then pay the rent. But on the flip side, with a small time landlord, you can negotiate something with them. You can go and talk to them face to face and work something out. And the other option as a small time landlord, if I'm unable to sell my property, my only option will then to go through a foreclosure process, which the bank will come and repossess my house and guess what now your landlord is the bank and just like the corporate landlords they're gonna come in and use their resources and legal powers to then try to evict you they don't care about negotiating with you all they care is about is getting you out and selling the property to another landlord so that then that landlord can rent it out to another tenant so there you go, just like that, all the small time landlords disappear through foreclosure process or they sell their rental property to these large corporate type owners. And you as a tenant, the only option that you have now is to deal with these large corporate landlords that pretty much see you as a number and they won't really care about negotiating with you in the first place. And the irony is that a lot of these corporate landlords are also backed and invested by individuals, again, who invest in 401ks, IRA, they may have a Robinhood account or an Acorn account, maybe they invest a couple hundred dollars here and there, but many of that investment is going towards these large corporate landlords that have bought apartment buildings, that have bought houses as a way to create more profit for these small time investors. So if you think that these corporate landlords are your enemy, well, the corporate landlords are comprised of these small time investors that could be your friends or even you. You might have invested in Robinhood or Acorn or, or you may have a small 401k or an IRA on the side that might be invested in a lot of these corporate landlords. So really guys, the best option is not to kill your local landlords. We want these small time landlords to stay in business so that you can actually have a face to face interaction with them. You can negotiate some sort of plan. Instead of going and doing a rent strike, you can go and have a conversation with your landlords. Now, are there evil and bad landlords? Absolutely. There are a small population of landlords. Unfortunately, they don't know what they're doing. You know, they're out to, you know, obviously try to evict people as much as possible. But at the same time, there are a larger group of landlords that want to do the good thing. They want to abide by the law. They want to be generous and do the right thing and help everyone out during the coronavirus pandemic. Instead of jumping right into signing a petition or joining a rent strike movement, why not just go and talk to the landlord about ultimately, I believe the right thing to do is maintain communication and try your best to cooperate with landlords. And for my landlords that are sticking around watching this, try your best to work with your tenants to come up with some sort of compromise solution, meet halfway or have some sort of win-win solution. And, and don't just immediately arrive at the conclusion of, hey, let's evict or hey, let's join a rent strike movement. I'm afraid that the digital age of social media and texting has led us to lose some of our our human skills to negotiate face to face and to have an actual interpersonal communication that leads to creating solutions. And listen, at the end of the day, I understand the frustration, I understand the anger, I understand that there's fear, but immediately protesting against the landlord without having a communication or at least trying to work with them, I think is a little bit unfair. And same thing goes for landlords. Landlords that want to immediately evict without having a conversation with the tenant, I think is also unfair. And again, instead of immediately jumping onto the rent strike bandwagon, I do ask that you consider the repercussion as well as the consequences of doing so. Because the last thing you want to do is turn a kind-hearted, innocent landlord into an unexpected enemy. But despite the fact, if you want to kill your local landlords and kill the small-time landlords and have all these big corporate landlords come and take over, then be my guest and keep on protesting. If you're a tenant watching this and you made it this far, well, it tells me that you want to take some sort of civil route and you want to have a conversation with your landlord, and I applaud you for that. And how both landlords and tenants can come out ahead of this is to have a civil dialogue and a conversation and come together to create a solution that's a win-win for everybody.